Proof General is an Emacs mode for interactive theorem proving and it works with Coq as well. Uh, to see how it works, let me show you a proof that Peirce's law and the law of excluded middle are equivalent. So first we open a file with the .v extension. If you installed Proof General, it'll fire up. And so now we're ready to start writing our Coq proof. First, I'm going to define the bo both laws. In this tutorial, I'm not explaining Coq itself. I'm explaining how to use Proof General. So I'm not going to focus on what is going on with Coq. This is Percy's law. So in interactive theorem proving, whenever you want, whenever you write a small piece of code or a proof, you want to immediately submit it to the theorem prover. In proof general, you do this by navigating up or down. So I want to say next step. This is going to make Coq accept what I just wrote. So that's control C, control N. It's asking me down here where to find the cock executable. And you see now that the part that I just wrote got colored. This means it was accepted by cock. And the window got split in two. Down here I see the response. So let me do the same thing with the law of excluded middle. Control C, Control N, and now we can prove that they are equivalent. In the bottom half, we now have one goal to prove. Koch is telling us in order to prove this theorem, you have to produce a proof of the thing that's below the line here, which is just a statement that I wrote. So let me start the proof. Every time you see this blue area going down, I press Ctrl C, Ctrl N. In fact, the stuff that's up here, I cannot edit. If I want to edit this, it's complaining. If I want to change this, I have to move up. So I move up with Ctrl C, Ctrl U, like this. So I can go up and down. And I'm doing and undoing the part that is accepted by cock and then I can edit it. I can also move directly to a given line by pressing Ctrl C, Ctrl Enter, and then it just goes here. Okay, so now let's prove this. So I might try it, for example, I might try a tactic like first order, but this is going to die because it doesn't know, doesn't know what to do with the two definitions. I have to say explicitly that purse and lem have to first be unfolded. So now I see I have a goal down here that I need to prove. And now if I use first order, it does a lot of it by itself. By the way, you don't always have to unfold definitions by hand. There are fancy things inside Coq that allow you to provide hints when definitions should be unfolded by themselves and so on. But we're not focusing on Coq right now. Okay, so now Coq is telling me down here that I, in fact, my one goal got split into two sub-goals and I'm looking at the current sub-goal, which is here. I have to prove the thing that's below the line, which is this, using the things above the line. And so here I have a hypothesis H, which if you look at it is just Peirce's law, and then I have P. This is not saying that I have the hypothesis P, this would be very easy then, from P, prove P or not P. This is saying P is a prop. So it's saying I have a P that is a prop, but I don't know whether it's true or false, and I have to prove P or not P. So in fact, the way to prove this is you apply H, but Cock won't be able to guess what to take for Q. It'll be able to guess what to take for P here, but not for Q. So I have to provide Q 
turns out it should be the negation of what I'm trying to prove like this. This will work. And so Koch applied the theorem and it said, well, if you want to do that, now your goal is to prove this thing here. So I'm getting tired of this. I'm just going to say, well, but this is just some tautological reasoning and the tactic T auto does that for me. I have been immediately moved to the second sub goal, which is to prove P from the hypothesis H. Well, H is a proof of for all P, P or not P. So this is just the law of excluded middle. And P and Q are two propositions. Again, this is not saying that P and Q are true. It's saying we have P and Q. H0 is a proof of, or an assumption H0, of P implies Q implies P. So now the way to do this again is to use H, and this time it has to be slightly different. It's like this. So again, I got two sub goals. And this one is very easy because I'm supposed to prove P, but now I do have the assumption that P holds. You see, this line here is saying P is a proposition. But this line here is saying H1 is a proof of P. So I have P. And the tactic assumption will find this and will say, okay, yep, it's okay. And the second one, well, now I could look at this and wonder how to do it, or I just get lazy and Cock will do it for me. I say use tautological reasoning and we are done. This is our first theorem and we have proved it.